it might be just a good looking strip. So Gary, what are we looking at here? Uh, we're gonna fish down this beach here, Blair. Uh, waiting for the tide to get right here this morning for those tarpon. And uh, try and pick us up a few snook, redfish along this beach. Fishing these stumps and logs. You say all these are still left over from Wilma, huh? Yes, this was all damaged from Wilma here on this beach. In 07, I think Wilma hit. Didn't hurt the population of these bumblebees around here, did it? No, it didn't. didn't I guess it, I guess it helped them because they're wood boring bumblebees. Yeah, and... got a lot of dead wood here to bore on now. Ooh. Ooh. Come on back here, big boy. You didn't feel it. Nice explosion there. Yeah. Well, I, I hesitated that second, waiting for him to pull. I felt a little pull, and I... You got him that time? I did. Cool beans. I'm gonna go right down with the talon. Okay. They usually have buddies. They usually, them have, top dogs. usually have buddies with them? Usually. You got a bunch of them in there. little guy, but that's all right. Take it. Like you say, you take them any way you can, man. They come up and hit a top dog like that. Actually, yeah. that's the pro dog. That's the new one that Mirror Lure's making. Okay, pro dog. It's got a little higher pitch sound with the uh, type of plastic that they're using with it. Like you always say, snooker sucker for red and white, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> they like it. Looks like you got him on the bottom there. Uh, it looks that way, Blair. Yep. Come here, little dude. He's all you, Blair. A little snooky. Yes, sir. He sure hit like he was a big one, didn't he? He did. He did. <laughs> Good fish. Let's see if we can get a bigger one up there. I'm ready. Is that a, that's a school of snook right there. Yeah, yeah, big school right there, Blair. Don't panic, I'm coming right to him. I know, I see that. <laughs> Good cast, Blair. Oh, he turned over there's there's two, two of them. them. A pair of them there. There he is. There we go, brother. <laughs> Nice, Blair. <laughs> the old targeted species. I didn't even see that one, did you? Ah. <laughs> Two or three or four of them, there's another one coming across. Oh, look at that him. one. I know, I see. Oh, Sorry, Blair. watch what I'm doing. I'll yeah, be looking at the snook to, over there. <laughs> I tried to hook another one, so we had a double header here. I got the talon. Is down. Beautiful little fish. Come back around you. Okay. Come back around. Just trying to get on that other snook I was watching. I don't want to get him caught on that gill plate. Even though it's 50 pound test, I've seen him slice 100 pound tests this small. Yes, sir. That one ain't got an inch, in, inch thick stripe, but that one will work. Come here, dude. Little DOA shrimp, my new favorite color when it's, a, it's the cotton type shrimp. But that right there is what you come to the Everglades for is these lovely snook because there are thousands and thousands of these guys down here. Uh, beautiful fish. Well, welcome to this episode of Addictive Fishing. Hang on, let me get this guy going. Get on out of here, dude. Swim on off. Whew. Man, you gotta love it when they swim away like that, huh, brother? Yes, sir. Uh, welcome to this episode of Addictive Fishing. We are in Florida's paradise. We're in the Everglades, Everglades National Park. We got Captain Gary Thompson. We haven't fished with you, what, seven years now? Seven years, Larry. It's been a long time, but uh, first thing we're gonna do today, we're gonna show you some snook, maybe some redfish, 
and uh, then we're going after the big silver king. So y'all stay tuned to this episode of Addict to Fishing, Captain Gary Thompson in the beautiful Everglades. We'll be right back. Awesome, man. Good to get tucked up in hair out of the wind, Gary. This is, this place doesn't look like it got hammered near as bad by Wilma. Yeah, it's come back very well since Wilma hit. And, uh, and yeah, Blair, it's nice because you have so many islands here. Um, you can always find a spot to hide from the wind when you're fishing here. Well, what, uh, what were you telling me earlier about the largest mangrove? Oh yeah, this is the world's largest mangrove jungle. Uh, we've got about two and a half million acres of mangroves growing here in the Everglades. And you were saying all four kinds too? Right? Yeah, we've got all four species of mangroves here. Uh, you've got the black mangrove, the white mangrove, the buttonwood, and the red mangrove, which is your most common species is the red mangrove. And I got, I got kind of confused because we did a trip down to Brazil and we're flying over rainforest and I almost wanted to argue with him and he goes, well Blair. Those aren't mangroves. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely beautiful down here. If y'all ever get a chance to come fish with Gary, highly recommend it. I mean, he's running through spots and telling stories about when he was a kid, you grew up here. Yes, sir. Your parents actually, your great, great grandparents? Or? Uh, great great grandfather came here in the 1850s from Key West. Family's been in Florida since the 1790s. And used to own Pavilion Key. Basically, yep, Pavilion the, Key homestead. was my family's homestead. Man. What a place to grow up there, huh? Yep. Bam, there he is, right there. All right. <clears throat> I felt him tag that thing. What is it? Feels like a redfish. <clears throat> yep. Red? Yep. Nice redfish. Good. He's still got a little life in him. <laughs> I'm all rigged up for these big snook and ooh, he's diving under. Pretty red fish here. Let me get him around on this side here. I'm gonna let, it, I'm gonna let him go on that side, so. Okay. Ooh, we're getting closer. <laughs> oh, that's a fat little red fish. As I said, we're rigged up to try to be catching snook today. And uh, going old school, using the uh, glow shrimp. Nice little redfish from the Everglades. God, isn't that pretty? Nice and clean. Got a little blood on his lip. And off he goes. I can't seem to get away from these redfish. There never used to be that many redfish down here, was there? Well, we've always had a lot of redfish, Blair, but uh, since that freeze four or five years ago, our redfish have come back abundantly. We've had a lot of redfish. Yeah, we were down here, uh, I think I mentioned this, we were down here, I think it was like two and a half, three years ago. Man, we couldn't get away from the redfish that were like 10, yeah. 12 inches long. Yeah, they're they're everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. So, well, we're rigged for snook. Let's see if we can show somebody one of these giant snook that live Back down here. Back started on this bank, get to working. A redfish ain't a bad surprise though. It's in the highland though, is it? Yes. Oh, it is? Yeah. It's right up here. Oh, there's a fish right there, brother. Oh! Not there! Jesus. I never even twitched that a single time. That's the way them two big ones hit me yesterday. They hit it when it was falling. Just dying. Big school of mullet right here, Blair. Well, life begets life, right? That's it. That's what it takes for us to catch them. So just start pitching the mangrove just like we've been doing. Yep, huh? just start pitching these mangroves and working them edges. As soon as we got up here, I saw the color, so change to the change to the gold. Got a little tannic in the water here. Fish on. Got him that time, brother. That's a good one. I'm gonna go to the back of the boat. <laughs> All right, come back up. Oh, well, he's not as big as I thought he was, but 
even as big as the first one you hooked either. Man. <laughs> oh well. It's a snook. Is it all good? Some are just better than others, right? That's it. I'm tired out. Let me get on the other side there. Come here, little dude. Oh, that was a long time coming there, Gary. Since the last one. Yes, the wear. Since even the last hit. Ah. Four inch. Old Faithful. That's what I call my uh, my confidence lure because I'm confident that these guys will eat it right here. Beautiful little fish. Kind of skinny. No wonder you ate that shrimp up so good. Nice fish, Blair. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> you know, on that note, I think I'm gonna have to retie it. Yeah, see, even though it's a small snook, if y'all see that little fray right there, even though it's fluorocarbon, they're gonna, they're gonna see that. So what I'm gonna do, almost after every snook, I'll trim it up just a little bit so they don't see that, uh, that smoky color. But uh, once again, y'all get a chance to come down here with Gary, do it. I'm gonna get re-rigged. Look, he's got him uh, another Jack. Another Jack Cravel on. Stay tuned, we're gonna be right back. Oh, that was a snook. Mm-hmm, I heard him. Oh, I seen him. Well, welcome back, folks. We've changed spots. We finally got the wind calmed down on us. We got a beautiful day here in the Everglades. Captain Gary Thompson, and uh, we've changed locations, and this looks like a nice, beautiful beach here. This is Highlands Beach, uh, south of Lostman's River, and we're gonna come in here and work these shorelines, uh, logs and stumps and stuff that's left over from Hurricane Wilma, and see if we can find us a snook or a redfish. So like anywhere else, wood is good. Wood is good. Wood is good. Let's see if we can get us a fish or two. Uh-oh, got a piece of wood? Yeah, I got hung up in the tree here. Hey, let me show you a uh, let me show you a technique. This is a technique that I did in the uh, in the redfish tournaments after fishing docks. All you gotta do, kind of reel down to it, pull back, I got my bail open, and you pop it. There you go. Thank you. Oh, how about that? I handed it to him. Hey, because I tossed it around. <laughs> that ain't right, is it, Blair? That ain't right, dude. That ain't right. I thought I was hung up again. <laughs> I said, oh, I thought I got that thing off of there. Yeah, it I just didn't right. I was just fixing to say, you know, fishing tournaments all up and down the east and west coast. Um, you know, it. Uh, I've got, I've been I've learned how to get off snags, you know, nine times out of ten. Right. And uh, so I was popping it up. If y'all didn't catch that, I was sitting there and I popped it off the log for him, handing the rod back, and he set the hook. I thought he was still snagged up on the uh, <laughs> on the log. But uh, that was a good snag to have right there. Yes, huh? it was. Very nice. Mm, little dude. It's been gone about an hour and a half and haven't had a hit yet. But uh, maybe we're starting to get into them here. <laughs> that was classic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Blair. Oh, you're welcome. That was nice after a while of not having a bite and plug it. Uh, he wasn't <laughs> coming off, I tell you that. Yeah, he hit it solid because I thought I was still on the log. I tightened it up. And all of a sudden, the line started feeling out of the reel. <laughs> not a log. <laughs> Man, they're pretty from down here, aren't they? <laughs> that one looks like he's got a little purple right there in his back. Nice and clean. Skinny though. Need some bait to move in, looks like. What a beautiful fish though. That's a, that's a three and a half, four year old snook. Depending on, on the diet that they've had. Right. Carry on, brother. If we're getting into them, it's time to pitch. We went in some clear water, so I changed up to the holographic the four inch so I can really get a good pitch with the wind and uh, this make a little more noise in the water when I'm twitching it so and that holographic looks absolutely killer in the water you can see it just absolutely glowing the 
down when you're fishing the Everglades, it's um, it's like stepping back into old Florida. And I don't think there's anybody better down there to fish with than Gary Thompson if you're going to fish the backcountry. Pull up to the first spot, and I mean, it, it's the Everglades. It's absolutely beautiful down there. Look at that redfish tailing right there, boy. The red, the yeah, redfish it is. tailing right there. So I reel up real quick, and I go back and grab my DOA shrimp. Try to judge the wind and behind. Back side up. I know, they eat with the other end, right? Yeah, usually. By the time I got it reeled back in and cast, he was already down and didn't get the red fish first off you know, in the morning. Get him? No, I think I had an oyster. The one rule that we have on the boat that I've been, you know, <laughs> guilty of many, many times is you do not cast until the cameras are ready. Camera George is sitting there getting everything ready. All you're seeing is the camera laying on its side. And you hear me in the background, oh, you got one on? And George scrambles real quick and gets the camera up. What you got there, Gary? Don't know, Blair. Whoa, Mr. Snook. God. We were all just kind of sitting there, uh, 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 you know, jaw drop. This Snook comes up to shake the lure off. And I mean, it's it, it, that much of his head was sticking out of the water. And it was, it was a monster. Oh, and he broke me off, buddy. Three days before we were here, we caught 38 to 42 inch Snook and uh, we caught them all on top water. So why don't you throw the top water and I'll throw this other lure, I'll throw something else subsurface, we'll see what they're eating. So I'm working this top water and all of a sudden Gary goes, oh, fish on. Well, I'm going to a shrimp, fish on. That's a good one there, Gary. Yes, sir. He hooks another one. Took off on a, on a great run. He fought it for you know a good three minutes. Yeah, I think I'll be going to a shrimp. That was the second cast with a shrimp, boom. He got it right near the boat. I was just fixing to grab it, and boom, it pops off. Oh! That day of fishing, it was tough. You know, everybody always asks me, you know, what happens when you don't have a day when the fish are bite? He sure hit like he was a big one, didn't he? He did. <laughs> when we got back to the dock, we knew how bad it was because everybody that fished inshore, everybody zero. Oh, there's a fish right there, brother. Oh! This is an after the fight scene. If you want to go see more after the fights, go to the YouTube channel and you can see plenty of them. If you ever get a chance to fish with Captain Gary, if it's a slow day, he'll definitely keep you entertained. One great guy to go fish with in the most beautiful place in Florida. Fishing down in the Everglades with Gary Thompson is like stepping back in time. He's got all the stories that you can imagine about the place down there. And one thing I absolutely love about Gary, he's all artificial. A great, great grandfather came here in the 1850s from Key West. Family's been in Florida since the 1790s. And used to own Pavilion Key. Basically, yep, Pavilion though. Key was my family's homestead. Man, what a place to grow up there, huh? Yep. Everybody's got their favorite color for a different fish and snook all around South Florida, no matter where I catch snook, I always say they're a sucker for red and white. Like you say, you take them any way you can, man. They come up and hit a top dog like that. Actually, that's the pro dog. That's the new one that Mirror Lure's making. Okay. You know, we got into a little bit different color water and I started throwing a glow shrimp and we got into clear water and I started throwing the holographic shrimp. Glow shrimp, nice little red fish. It's just kind of matching the conditions. Everybody always asks, what colors do you like? And it kind of all depends on how much light I have shining. If it's a real bright sunny day and I'm clear water, I want to throw something really clear or I want to throw a natural color. The DOA shrimp, my new favorite color when it's, a co it's the cotton type shrimp. But that right there is what you come to the Everglades for. It was just mayhem that day. The bite was a little slow and Gary can definitely keep you entertained out there. He was born and raised down in Chukaluski. His parents were, his grandparents were. He's a great guy to go with. I highly recommend it. But remember one thing, every fishing season starts right here at Dick's. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. Well, we finally made it back here to Chukaluski Island Park Marina and uh, we tried to show you some big fish at the end of the day. We did everything. I think we fished every nook and cranny you did as a kid here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Cam Gary grew up, and if you're gonna catch fish here, you're gonna do it with him. So I highly recommend you come book Captain Gary Thompson, and uh, you can get in touch with him right here at the Chukaluski Island Park Marina. Talk to Sonny, and uh, you'll definitely get in touch with Gary. He'll put you on some fish and show you the beautiful Florida Everglades. Largest, uh, second largest estuary in the world. Yes. Don't forget about the website, addictedfishing.com. We'll see you next week. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to AddictiveFishing.com for outtakes and bloopers.
into ski trail. Oh, damn. I about get you, Blair? Yeah. Jack on. Jack off. <laughs> He's a jumper. <laughs> <laughs>